everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all one of my favorite ways of setting quartz crystals into polymer clay. And these are undrilled quartz crystals. You can see you'll look for something. If you want to follow all, you can use drilled stuff. That's not going to make any difference. Um, like it actually could make it more secure. But if you have a rough quartz crystal that has not been polished, not been drilled or anything, um, I think this will be a pretty good uh, technique for you. So let's get started. So to start with, we have our rough quartz crystal, a large ring. Um, this is granite gray or gray granite um, Primo FX Sculpey. And then this is just a marbled out blend of green, like some different colors of greens and browns um, kind of rolled and mixed together. Uh, th and also there will be a list of tools and materials down in the video description below. We have a needle tool, a wire brush tool, and then this is a nice little texturing background tool that's actually used for leather working, but they're fantastic for doing a stone texture onto the clay. Like just to give an example, this is untextured clay. Well, it has my fingerprint on it, but you can take it and you just stamp it with this stamp. And it gives it that really cool, mottled, almost lizard skin, surface of the moon kind of uh, detailing. So just throw that on the ground. Um, so now to get started, we're going to want to take some liquid polymer clay that I actually store upside down. Um, this is translucent. And I'm just going to take this and kind of... Squeeze some out, and you want to do a, a thin layer, kind of globby, all over your stone. And where it's smooth as glass, you're not going to want to put as much clay because it's not going to adhere well. But if the stone has rougher spots, like definitely up here at the top then around and down on the sides um, go ahead and do a nice generous layer of this liquid polymer clay okay now that's done I'm putting the cap back on putting it back upside down um, then I'm just gonna set our crystal over here so that it's not gonna smush onto anything and we're gonna start out with this gray granite I'm just going to start conditioning it. And you could use whatever color schemes that you like. This is just a way that um, it's very similar to the techniques that I use in my fairy houses. But I think it's just a cute little way to, um, to set crystals. So... I'm just folding and rolling. So I roll it. I fold it, and then I roll it. And the heat from the mixing and from my hands is going to really condition the clay. It's getting all the little clay particles lined up and mixed thoroughly together. Okay. So now... You could go through using like a little knife or something, or you could just use your hands or your fingernails, which is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm just going to come through and I'm slicing off what are going to become little bricks. Nice varying sizes. Not being too particular to have them be perfect in shape or size. And to put it into a frame of reference, the amount that I'm using here was a little under um, half an ounce. Like, because they come in little two ounce blocks. And I used a little under a fourth of a block, so. And 
And I don't even think I'm going to need, like, need to use the whole batch. But I just want to, you know, prep more than what you necessarily need to. And I love the gray granite because it does have some, like, glittery texture and stuff in it. But it doesn't cross-contaminate. It doesn't get glitter all over your work surface the way that, like, some of the uh, glitter effects... Not the pearl effects, but the glitter effects uh, clay can tend to do. Okay, so now we've got a pretty decent start going. And I'm just going to roll these guys into, not a perfect ball, but just I want to remove the sharper edges and get them a little bit more evenly shaped. And so this can be a little time consuming, definitely something to do when you're chaining YouTube or streaming Netflix or Crunchyroll or your, your poison of choice. You can also just use your fingertips to roll into a ball. It's, I mean, there's really, there's no wrong way to go about it. Just uh, whatever gets you a result that you're happy with. So I'm just going to keep on rolling. Rolling. Rolling up my palm clay. Yeah, not everything translates well into a filk. Sorry, guys. I've got a song in my heart. I can't help it. And some of these are, you know, just a little larger than others and stuff, and that's okay. And this is the same way I do brick, the brick and stone masonry on my fairy houses, so. I, I've fortunately been able to build up a pretty high tolerance to doing the same repetitive task over and over and over again. But I feel like it's worth it. If, it, if I didn't feel like it were worth it, I wouldn't do it. Hmm. Hmm. So I've only got a couple more to go. Okay, so now I'm going to take these and oh, make a mess of my liquid clay. But we can take it and just kind of smooch. I want to start placing them onto our, um, I want to say the little ones. I'm going to do the biggest stones first. But I'm just placing it onto our crystal. And that's what you want to watch out for. Did you see how I pushed it and it kind of just slid everything right over? Um, you can't really, I mean, that's where this liquid polymer clay is going to come in quite handy with this as a pendant. Um, is it's really going to help it to adhere to the crystal. And I do want all of our little stones to kind of come together. Let me see if I can't zoom this in a bit for you. You know, that way we don't have to worry about um, any cracks or crevices. But if there are cracks and crevices, we will deal with them here in a little bit. And I'm going to show you guys how. But we're just going to keep taking individual little balls and just smooshing them. Smoosh. <laughs> Smoosh. Smoosh. 
And you can see, uh, I like doing the prep work first, you know, by preparing all the little balls to be stones. Um, I feel like it really allows me to uh, just be creative and, like, just start picking one and smushing it and picking and smushing. Um, and kind of get a flow going as opposed to being like, oh, well, I guess I need to... Uh, you know, mix up more balls, which what I'm going to do here now is I've established what I want to be the front, I think, and I'm just using a piece of clay to stabilize this ring. And we're going to start building up and around this ring. So I'm just going to continue smushing. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to take this tool and make sure that the inside of this ring stays um, nice and open. I'm testing out different sizes of tools. Yeah. This one's probably going to be the best for it. Go away, little bug. So I'm just taking and placing and smushing. I'm not really doing any shaping yet. I'm just placing the, uh, the clay. <laughs> And now I'm going to open up the center, because you do want to keep that nice and open. And now I'm going to start folding them over. Kind of cram it back through. Okay. So now I can take more stones. And I'm just going to kind of keep this guy in there. But I can take them and merge the pieces together just a little bit more. See how that kind of builds it all in together as one piece? Now we can also take a ball stylus tool. And get in there and really just open this up, but still encourage that to go down. So you can see that, see that kind of shaping. And now we're going to come through and I'm going to use this texture tool. I'm trying my best to hold it by the crystal. <laughs> And I'm just going to do some little imprinting. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to bake it in my toaster oven for about 15 minutes on 275. And then we will come right back here to do more detailing, more texturing, and more fun stuff. So I'm going to be baking it on a stone tile, or a ceramic tile rather. Trying to make as little contact with the clay on the surface of the tile as possible. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go bake this and I'll meet you all right back here. Okay, so I've taken it out of the oven. I've removed <clears throat> the crystal pendant from the hot trivet. Um, that way 
it can start cooling down even faster. And while it cools the rest of the way, um, I'm actually going to start rolling out some snakes that are actually going to end up being vines. So you can see we can kind of want to get some of them quite small. Um, so there's one. And that's round about the size that I'm looking for. So there's two. And I kind of just roll them until they break on their own. And then taper down that end again. Just a second. I want to detach the cord so I stop bumping into it. And we're just going to keep kind of rolling and fading it out. Oops. It's a nice long one. And where the ends break, I try to taper it back down. And we're getting a nice natural variance of thickness and length and, you know, taper. Okay. This is still pretty warm. Yeah, quite warm to the touch. <laughs> so now that we have all of our little woody looking vines prepped, let me see if I can reposition the camera just a bit more. Um, I'm going to move these other stones out of the way and save these because more often than not whenever I'm doing pendants like this, um, whenever I'm creating inventory for in my booth, um, I'll go ahead and like pick out like five crystals and then just kind of do them in bulk. So you can see I've just ripped a little bit off of here <clears throat> and I'm actually going to flatten this out with my fingers. Which you can see, it gives us a really nice modeling, like kind of detail and texture. Well, color variants at least. To give the detail and texture, I'm going to take this wire brush, which is a clay sculpting tool, and I'm just going to turn this a bit so you can see. Um, tap this. with the wire brush. And you can see it starts to really texture. And this is going to give us what is going to become our moss. So there's a little piece. And sometimes pieces will flake off, sometimes they won't. Just let it do its thing. You don't want to be tapping and cramming so hard that um, you start bending your bristles. And if you get any clay stuck in your bristles, just go ahead and scooch them out. You know, with a needle tool or your fingernail or whatever. So to slow down the motion, you can really see I'm just stab, pull, stab, pull, stab, pull. And I feel like that gives it a really nice texture. Okay. So now from here, 
I'm gonna move this back over to the side so it's out of my I'm not gonna be hitting it with my hands Um, we can definitely come through. This is an angled eyeshadow brush. And here I have my favorite matte black eyeshadow by Almay. It's a really high pigment, which I love that. So I'm actually going to come in here and kind of coming flush with the crystal and then pushing up and then like kind of fluffing away. This is giving me a really nice opportunity to um, darken down just the edges of our crystal. Which it's getting a little cooler, so it's a little easier to handle it now. Um, and so I'm just going to come through and more or less dry brushing it because it's you can see it's starting to pick up some of those details this crystal is still quite hot and we're catching it up on that loop as well and so now you can see it's brought out just a little bit of the detailing and technically you could leave it like this and it would be complete but I want to add just a little bit more detail because to me that's the fun part um, so I'm actually going to twist together a few of these longer strands let me zoom out just a little bit more for you guys um, and I don't necessarily want all of the ends lining up with each other but so I'm just gonna Kind of grab and place. I am going to twist in the same direction, however. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to thread it through our little <clears throat> loop. So there's once. And I'm going to thread it through again. Trying to get all of our little tendrils to come on through as best we can there we go and then I'm just gonna wrap that down and around and this one got kind of messed up so I'm actually gonna smush everything down into one little um, one little tendril. So I'm going to take it and I'm just going to start gently nudging it with this ball tool into a little spiral. Boop. Just like that. Or however it ends up. <laughs> um, and now I'm going to get in here and I'm actually going to, it ruins the detail, but it's vital that this opening stays nice and open. Um, So I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to let this one deviate off on its own like how it did. Um, but these two are going to get twisted together. And they're going to come around. Maybe like this. <laughs> like, I mean, there's really, there's no wrong way to do this, y'all. Like, just do what makes you happy. Yeah, this one got kind of smushed, um, so, oh, there, and it broke off, so now I'm just gonna scrape that off with my fingernail. Yeah. There we go. And so that's how that's starting to come along, because I wanted it to look a little bit like tree roots growing and snarling and snagging around. Um, and we can actually take this green here 
and um, I was thinking about making a base for our clay that way I don't have to keep setting it down so I've smushed the tip of my crystal into this clay that it doesn't matter how the colors get distorted um, but now I'll be able to actually you know function with it as a base Ooh, that makes me so happy okay and so now I'm also going to make just a little puddle of liquid polymer clay for me to function out of. Let me see if I can't really force the bottle down, get some flow going here. Okay, so that should be enough of a, uh, of a start. Okay, so now what we'll do is I'm going to get just a little bit of this liquid polymer clay. Man, this stuff is stringy. And, and I'm mostly just using this as an attachment glue. So if you have a different product that you like to use for an attachment glue, go ahead and use that. And I'm just going to tear off little pieces of our greenery. And I'm going to poke and prod it into place. see if we can't bring this around maybe sorry pardon me while I mess with my camera um <laughs> it this way I and mean, I don't want my hands to be in the way because you want this to like yes it's gonna look delicate but you want it to be very actually quite durable <clears throat> so we're gonna take just a little bit more of this liquid clay and we're gonna put boop right in here and just a little doop. sound effects can help. Do not underestimate the power of sound effects to make your life more enjoyable. <laughs> so there you can kind of see. There we go. The camera was putting it into shadow. So now I'm just rolling up some more brown clay. And so I'm just kind of placing and shaping and prodding and just sculpting, letting my artistic whim take over. Ah, and since I've got a little bit of like sticky 
polymer clay on my hands. Um, it's making placing the clay really difficult because it keeps wanting to stick to my hands as opposed to the um, sculpture itself. So I'm actually using the back of my fingernails quite a bit to kind of smush everything in. And I think that'll be just fine. There we are. And so I'm actually going to piece a couple of little polymer clay tendrils together. Then add in another one, like right, eh, just wherever it lands. And then I'm going to curl that down. And then I'm going to curl that down up here at the top. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to set it right there. I'm actually going to give ourselves a little spot of liquid clay to hold that in place. Now fortunately this liquid clay bakes down to translucent, so um... I don't feel like it distracts or is detrimental to our sculpture at all. Sorry, y'all get to hear my washing machine in the background. <laughs> um, so this is how it's starting to kind of come out. And you can add and take away and I mean just really however makes you happy. I'm going to come around from this angle a little bit more again. Sorry, I just want to try to capture as many different perspectives as I can. For y'all to be able to get, you know, just some perspective of what I'm doing here. Also, you can come in and just take little chunks. And I actually just want a little long narrow piece so you can see kind of how I detached that from the rest. And then I'm actually just going to put this in right here. Sorry. I mean to put my big old hand in the way.
And so I'm just scraping up some of this and almost tucking it underneath and then pushing it down and starting to sculpt again. I'm going to experiment with putting it under the clay first. And then sculpting it in and down. Just kind of coming through, retexturing. And now we do have something that was gifted to me by my friend with, I believe it's Designs by L her business card somewhere but she sent me these beautiful little gems which I thought there were some that were a little bit smaller mixed in there I guess it was an optical illusion but um these ones do they have a green tint to them or were they just reflecting what I wanted to see no yeah those are silvery okay I'm going to put these back in the container. <laughs> but I am going to experiment a little bit with putting these gems uh, onto the crystal. Just to see what happens. Figure I will experiment, that way you will know. <laughs> Let me go the next one over. These nice dark green. So now I'm just going to use a spot of liquid polymer clay. Just put it in right there. Then one of these very pretty green, emerald green gems. Just pressed in there. And then I'm actually going to come in and layer a little bit on top of it some of this moss. I just wanted to experiment to see. You never know what will happen until you try. You make estimated guesses, like educated guesses, all day long. But you never really know until you try. And I'm just going to put the one in there, that way if it messes up, it's, you know, I don't want to waste something, you know, that was so generously given to me. And I also, if it does, like, melt and, I don't know, combust into flames or something, um, I don't want to, uh, have to repair too much of the piece. Okay. So what color was that? One of the clear? I had one of the clear ones that hid out of the package. <laughs> I'm scraping a little bit off of there. I'm going to put it right in here. It 
and I am actually going to be putting quite a bit of moss and stuff around it so I put on a pretty big glob Mmm, that's nice. Okay, so I'm gonna pull off just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. a little flash <laughs> from within So now I'm going to come through and I'm just going to kind of edge the rest of these vines with the moss. Ugh. And it really does make a huge difference to deal with the mess and use the liquid polymer clay to get stuff to stick. Excuse me. I'm allergic to fairies. <laughs> okay. And I'm just tearing off, I mean, really minute little pieces sometimes. Um, Now I think next time I may forego the first baking, or rather I might just do the loop for the first baking, and then do the layers of stone and stuff. Um, because I really like being able to smush it all in together, and having a nice little base to hold on to and work from, I think is really nice. And so you can keep just kind of building and decorating like that. I'm just going to squeeze just a little bit more liquid polymer clay out.
so now I'm going to kind of just tug and pull and get a little section pulled off and then place it. And I try to kind of just let go. I can be a little bit of a control freak sometimes. So on pieces like this, and that's probably something that I learn the most about whenever I'm creating art is to let go, to not, you know, have to control every little thing, to not be, you know, I'm just the one doing it. I'm not necessarily the one in charge, if that makes sense. Like, at least certainly not my conscious mind. You know, it's, I think it might be more like my subconscious just being like, hey, how about we do this? And I'm like, oh, okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> and that is literally how it happens. <laughs> and it's taken me years and years of practice to be able to sit back and just let my subconscious uh, self be like, hey, I'm just going to art. And just get into the zone, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I think there's a lot of different things that a lot of different people can call it. But it boils down to a very happy inner self. So I can dig it. <laughs> and I don't want too much coming down over the quartz. Because I do want it to still, you know, be very clearly a quartz crystal. So I think, I think that does us. I'm pretty pleased with that. So now I'm going to remove this from its little bit of clay. And I'm going to set it down back on its stone. And we can actually take a little ball of clay or something and like maybe prop this up. There we go. That way it's not touching too much of the trivet. Because I don't want it to leave any dark, shiny spots. And here you can see what I've done. There we go. But just that little bowl there is going to hold it up. And so I'm going to put this back in the oven, and then I'll meet you all right back here. Okay, so I've pulled it out of the oven. It's still quite warm. Um, but you can see the gem sparkles and shines nicely as does the green one. But now I'd like to go through with a stiff bristled brush, if I can find one. This one should do us okay. Just a flat one. <laughs> and I'm going to use a mixture of coffee bean and raw iron um, acrylic paint. Mm. Hush puppy. The dogs are very distraught. We just had lunch while this was baking and um, they can't believe the, ne ne the negligence, the cruel world that they're forced to live in where they do not get to eat our salads for us. So... <laughs> Okay, so I'm folding up a piece of scrap paper off camera because I'm going to show you this little trick that I learned from my friend Lauren with the Ruin Cosplay. Now she does this on her foam armor, but I very much enjoy doing it on just about everything now. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of the wrought iron. Which you can see is almost like a bit of a, like a green black and a bit of the brown. And I'm just going to mix them in together. And I'm going to try to work it out of the brush. And then just tap. And you can see whenever it gets to here, that point, where there's just a little bit of color left in the bristles. <laughs> And I'm just going to come through and kind of dry brush it. I angle 
this down a little bit more, zoom in a little more. Now we may also be able to come through um, and just kind of antique it down a little bit. Rubbing in the antique. Sorry, I did not mean to go off camera. Just doing a little mixture of the brown and the green and the... Okay, so there we are. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush. Take me by the hand, take me to the me. It's a real trip. And now with a clean stiff bristled brush. There we go. Gonna get just a little bit of water on my brush. And kind of just wash the surface. So as I kind of scrub, it's going to lift the pigment. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off camera. I'm going to zoom back out so you can see the bigger picture of what we're doing. But as it scrubs and loosens the acrylic paint, it shows the brighter color underneath. while still leaving some deposited in the crevices. Mm. Oh, doggy. And then it's priority to me that the quartz crystal itself stays quite clean. So just cleaning up our edge work there. Make sure there's no little bits of uh, polymer clay stuck, or not polymer clay, but tissue stuck to the polymer clay. And here we are. <laughs> Now I'm going to go through after this is nice and dry and <laughs> Z, <laughs> calm down, honey, <laughs> and um, spray it with um, PYM, P -Y -M too. I'll put a link down to where I like to purchase it uh, down in the video description below. And then with a nice, again, just drying off this smaller brush come through and just I I really like to give it a good scrub just to get off any um, any residual paint that might have built up but I think that looks pretty cool I like the way it looks at least <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for the, wow, the way the light catches that is totally cool. Um, but uh, thanks for joining me for this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, I would love to hear from you. This is how our final piece turned out. So, uh, I'll have pictures of it and stuff on like our Instagram and everything. Speaking of which, if you guys follow this tutorial and would like to share pictures of what you've made there's links to all my social media down below you can post to my facebook wall or you can tag me on instagram um 
Also, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please check me out on Patreon. We do like fairy house giveaways and craft crates and all sorts of different things. Um, but these videos are made possible by our patrons. So thank you guys so much. Even if you just pledge a dollar, that does more than you know um, in helping us to produce these daily videos and try to keep our content quality up and um, try to fulfill y'all's specific requests too, which that's another thing is if you guys have requests for specific videos, um, leave a comment down below. It's, I mean, I make these videos because they make me happy, but I'm always up for suggestions for like, hey, can you do a video about this? I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, so, um, but yeah. Thanks guys for hanging out with me. Um, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below. Uh, I think I said this already, but all the tools and materials used for making this are listed down below too. So, um, happy crafting you guys. I'll see you around. Bye! <laughs>